Good morning again, everybody. Um, my name is Maria Chapa Lopez, and I'm the United States Attorney here in the Middle District of Florida. We are very excited here this morning to welcome Attorney General William Barr. Thank you so much for being here this morning. <laughs> Assistant to the President and Senior Counselor Kellyanne Conway. Thank you so much. And Assistant to the President and Director of the Domestic Policy Council, Mr. Joe Grogan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome to all of you, uh, as well as our distinguished guests here in the audience, um, fellow U.S. attorneys from around the country, um, and all of you, our special guests here today. Welcome to beautiful Sun City Center <clears throat> here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Yay. Together with my fellow U.S. attorneys from the Northern District of Florida, as well as the Southern District of Florida, and our law enforcement community partners who have joined us here this morning, we are gathered to discuss one of the Department of Justice's top priorities, and that's keeping all of you, all of our seniors, all of our senior community safe. Today you will hear from an array of esteemed uh, speakers about our various efforts in the Department of Justice to keep our seniors safe. Moreover, you'll learn how you can become a critical partner in helping us keep you safe. We would not be here today without the assistance and hospitality of some very special people that I would like to thank before we continue the program. I would like to thank the Sun City Center Community Association. With a very special thanks to Lynn Wright. Thank you so much for all the work you've been doing this morning. Thank you to Sam Sudman, the Sun City Center uh, Men's Club, and the entire staff here at Sun City Center Community Hall. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Deputy Jeff Mary and the entire Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office who were here early this morning when I, was, when I arrived early this morning, making sure that the hall was safe and that it was secure. So thank you so much for your... <laughs> now I would like to introduce Mr. Joe Grogan. Mr. Grogan currently, as I mentioned earlier, currently serves as assistant to the president and as director of Domestic Policy Council where he heads up the administration's domestic policy agenda. Previously, he served as Associate Director for Health Programs at the Office of Management and Budget, managing an, uh, the allocation and budgeting of more than $1 trillion in federal spending. In the private sector, he worked in management at leading bio biotechnology firms such as Gilead, Gilead Sciences, Inc. and Amgen, Inc. During the administration of President George W. Bush, he served as both a civil servant and in policy making roles for more than seven years. He served as executive director of the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV and AIDS, senior advisor to the FDA commissioner, and special assistant to the administration for children and families. He is a graduate of William and Mary School of Law and the University of Albany. Please welcome Mr. Joe Grogan. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, and thank you all for coming. It's my, my pleasure to share the stage with the Attorney General and Kellyanne Conway and to work on issues <clears throat> for this president that cross-cut uh, various federal agencies. Elder fraud, elder abuse, making sure that uh, our seniors are taken care of in quality health care facilities is a priority for the Department of Health and Human Services, and it's a pi priority for this president. I have the opportunity to sit down with the president just about every day, I'll see him this afternoon, and to talk to him about various issues that he wants to address or that uh, we want to help solve. I can tell you that he is always focused on fixing problems that other administrations have ignored and standing up for people that can't fight for themselves. <clears throat> He's constantly uh, bringing us problems uh, and telling us to stand up for people who are being taken advantage of or who are, who are vulnerable. He's not reacting to, pol to polls or the latest fad or what the latest news story is. 
and he wants us to fight for America's seniors because far too often America's seniors are taken advantage of and nobody's standing up for them. It's one of the reasons why this initiative has been uh, so much, uh, frankly, so gratifying to work on because he's so focused on it and never lets us stop and doesn't want anything to get in our way. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services and the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services has been focusing on uh, protecting the vulnerable by uh, ensuring that Medicare is solvent by keeping waste, fraud, and abuse out of the system. Other administrations come up with ways to save money in Medicare by, making by bringing forth proposals for seniors to sacrifice or seniors to pay more. This administration is saying no. There is plenty of waste, fraud, and abuse in the system, and we should be focusing on quality care for our nation's seniors. We should be focusing on making sure <clears throat> making sure that our dollars are devoted in the best way possible for quality care for our seniors. It's been our primary focus from the beginning. In his budgets that he sent forth to Congress, you will not see cuts for seniors anywhere in there, no proposals for increased cost sharing, proposals for re reduced payments to uh, companies, to providers in various aspects that are not providing quality care. That's where all the funding comes from, all the funding cuts come from. When quality is not provided, people shouldn't get paid for substandard care. Uh, as part of that initiative, the SEMA Verma at CMS launched an icon to increase transparency on websites to make sure that seniors who are looking at uh, uh, senior living facilities and nursing homes can identify institutions that may be at risk for elder abuse or fraud. Every month, CMS updates their their database and puts on their web a listing of uh, institutions that they've inspected and those that they have identified that may be putting seniors at risk of fraud or abuse. It's not, it doesn't hang out there for six months or four months or a year and not get revisited. Every month this website is updated so that seniors and their family members can help shop for the best facilities for them. I want to make sure that people understand uh, in, in this focus on quality care how, how much the uh, President, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar, and Administrator Seema Verma spend on this issue. It is always top of mind it, when they're confronting policy issues. It is our number one health care agenda item is to make sure that money is not wasted and everything we spend money on uh, is devoted to quality. It's a pleasure for me to work on, on this issue, as I said, with the, the Attorney General and Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne Conway has become uh, one of my best friends in the White House because she never loses energy. And whenever uh, I have to go and seek help from somebody on an issue, she's willing to roll up her sleeves and help. She is out there on, on TV all the time defending this president and our agenda. She always gives uh, good advice. She's a great person to work with. And it's a pleasure to, for me to be on the stage with her, let alone to introduce her. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Joe Grogan. Hello, Sun City. Thank you for being here today. I also would like to acknowledge and thank Attorney General Bill Barr for being with us today. Maria, thank you so much for that lovely inter introduction of all of us. And to all the law enforcement and first responders with us today, veterans especially, a special shout out to each and every one of you. But we're here to give you specifics. This is very simple. This is about protecting our seniors from pernicious predatory behavior, both financial, physical, and often emotional. And we're also here to punish those who are doing the preying on our seniors. We have had, thank you. <laughs> President Trump and his entire administration is committed to protecting elders from the criminal enterprises that increasingly are on the dark web, the open web, and also overseas, hiding beneath many layers, online and offline. They're difficult to detect and difficult to bring to justice, but that will not stop us from seeking justice and compensation to make sure our seniors are not victim any longer to these type of criminal enterprises. Okay. 
Too many of our seniors in this country are unwittingly one click away on the computer or one phone call away from having their entire life savings wiped out. And in sometimes these calls take the, take the, the nature of inviting you to invest money or to claim a big lottery prize. And other times, they are specifically meant to harm and frighten you. You must send me this amount of money now to pay these taxes or pay this bill or else, and then there's usually a threat at the other end of the, end of the phone. This has totaled about $1.8 billion in losses and has affected over, well, um, millions and millions of seniors nationwide, including here in Florida and Sun City, just since 2018 alone. So what have we done and what would we like to do about it? One thing that passed in 2018 is called the uh, Senior Safe Act. And that went a pretty good way. It's a bipartisan initiative. It went a pretty good way to incentivizing financial institutions to help us to ferret out the fraud ahead of time or as it's happening. So if there are large withdrawals occurring, unusual or regular financial, irregular financial activity in a senior's account, these financial institutions now have both protection from prosecution and civil action and also an incentive to help to report this to the FBI and to other uh, local and federal law enforcement agencies. We're trying to fix that through new legislation. And again, this is a nonpartisan issue starving for bipartisan solutions. And so the new fix would basically enhance penalties and put a 10-year penalty, up to 10 additional years, for any telemarketing or email scams that target anybody over the age of 55. Now, respectfully, I'm 53, so when I read that, I said, oh, I thought this was for the elders, but OK. <laughs> Maybe this is for the seniors and what I would call the junior seniors who <laughs> aspire to be seniors. We realized that the original legislation did not adequately address big schemes, far-reaching schemes like the Jamaican lottery system and impersonation fraud schemes, which are often increasingly some of the most lucrative. We are always trying to stay a couple steps ahead of these very innovative, very um, punishing and unforgiving, pretty creative and pretty ruthless and craven, brazen criminal enterprises. In addition, um, my colleague Joe Grogan mentioned the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So my message is to remind each of us that President Trump has said he will not touch Medicare and Medicaid. And my message to people who are in assisted living, in nursing homes, in banking, we're not touching Medicaid and Medicare for seniors, and you're not touching the seniors anymore. That is my message to them. Hands off the seniors. But just a few months ago, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services launched a successful anti-fraud initiative and technology. And the 25, I'm sure that'll make you a superstar tonight, but I'm here for the seniors. Um, it's easy to be loud. It's much more difficult to do something about it. And we're here to do something about it. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced the top 25 participants selected to advance a stage one of the Artificial Intelligence Health Outcomes Challenge. And this directly talks about what we're doing here to keep patients healthy, including our great seniors. Um, this engages with innovators from all sectors. And I think it's such an important initiative for another reason. We in the federal government don't expect to and don't want to do this alone. We are calling on private sector, obviously financial institution, but other private sector actors who wish to help, in addition to our law enforcement and our community-based um, actors. We really feel like those closest to the people in need know best how to administer to those needs. And one thing I would ask each and every one of you to do today is to become an ambassador for these messages and for these initiatives. Because if people see you, they're going to say, hey, I like you, and you're like me. We have a connective tissue. You also are a senior living in this part of Florida or 
you know someone who's been a victim of these fraudulent, pernicious, predatory schemes, and now you have information to help them become whole. Also, I'm happy to tell you that in our latest budget, the President's latest budget, there's $7.2 million additional dollars in funding to help support a transnational elder, elder justice tri strike force. And we are going to be having, either at the White House or out on the road with the President, hopefully the Attorney General will be there as well, I know he will be, an elder justice summit, either out in the country somewhere or certainly at the White House, so that we can bring to bear additional action. Yes. We're increasing penalties for those who illegally smuggle large sums of cash, including money fraudulently obtained from the seniors. We're making it easier to freeze the assets of those offending uh, bank accounts. And also those who are concealing the laundering of elders' money. And also we're working increasingly with those in the know to help make our seniors whole. Sometimes the restitution and making you whole, restoring you to where you were, takes longer than you would wish. But this is something that's very important to us. You deserve the financial and physical security and safety and the dignity of knowing that your assets are indeed your assets. I have discussed, as, as Joe Grogan and the Attorney General have discussed this issue directly with the President of the United States. He's very focused on um, elder abuse in our assisted living and nursing home facilities. He's very focused on the financial fraud and very excited that much like the VA hotline that we put up in the White House Veterans Hotline a couple of years ago, that we're going to have a brand new hotline committed to elder fraud. Please share that. Please write that down somewhere. Please give it to everyone you can think of. It takes you a couple of seconds and you may just be able to be a part of the solution as well. So I would like to thank you all again for having us and give you redouble our commitment on behalf of President Trump and our entire administration to work in safeguarding our seniors and their assets. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce today Attorney General Bill Barr. Yes. Okay. He was confirmed as the 85th U.S. Attorney U.S. Attorney General on last Valentine's Day over a year ago. And you'd have to go back to the Millard Fillmore administration um, and John Crittenden to find somebody who's the only other person in American history to do what Bill Barr has done, which is to serve as our Attorney General twice for two different administrations. <laughs> the Attorney General is a native New Yorker with his undergraduate degree from Columbia University. His, his career has spanned the public and private sectors. He has worked on many, many different matters that have directly affected and impacted the United States, whether it be on civil rights, cybersecurity, detecting fraud and abuse. He's currently working doggedly on trafficking of humans, of drugs, of, of firearms. And I also have had a real pleasure working with the Attorney General and his large team at the Department of Justice on our crisis next door, the poly drug crisis of opioids, meth, heroin, and the like, and fentanyl. And I also uh, want to say that here we are on the stage today, Mr. Attorney General, but 28 years ago, this May, the Attorney General was the commencement speaker at my law school graduation. And we actually went to the same law school. So from there to here, it's been a straight line of 28 years. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and privilege to introduce the 85th and the 77th Attorney General of the United States, Bill Barr. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Kellyanne and Joe, for all you do uh, to help us uh, at the Department of Justice. Um, I do like to say that I am the first person to be attorney general in two different centuries. <laughs> I'd like to thank the honor guard uh, and the choir uh, for the presentation uh, of colors and uh, musical interlude. I'd like to thank all of uh, my, my colleagues in federal law enforcement and state and local law enforcement, as well as all of you who are sharing uh, time with us today, uh, and I'd like to thank you for your commitment to keeping seniors safe. Uh, today's event highlights 
what I am personally very committed to and what the Department of Justice is uh, very committed to, and that is protecting our senior citizens from abuse and from predatory fraudulent schemes. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that the department has been doing, uh, and I'm pleased that today I have several announcements uh, to make in this area. Let me start with the problem of, of fraud. As people live longer, fraud directed at our senior citizens has become an increasingly serious problem. In fact, it's been mushrooming over the past several years. According to one report of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, financial scams and other crimes targeted at our senior citizens quadrupled since 2013. It's involved more than $6 billion of losses. With the advent of the internet and other technology, the elderly have become especially vulnerable. What makes these crimes particularly heinous is not just the vulnerability of the victims. It's not just that it involves an abuse of trust, but rather that due to the victim's stage of life, it is frequently impossible for them to recover the financial loss. And this means a devastating impact on the victims. These victims should be in their golden years, having worked very hard uh, to save up for retirement. And frequently, their life savings are just taken from them by these cold-blooded fraudsters. This is why the administration has made attacking this particular form of fraud, which, as I say, has been mushrooming as one of our highest priorities. Shortly before I was appointed to serve as Attorney General, something happened that drove home to me both the viciousness of this crime and why we had to really tackle it full on. I myself was used as a lure in a scam. I was sitting one day in my family room and the phone rang and like many of us I let it go to voicemail and I heard on the voicemail that it was a reporter which made me even more determined not to pick up the phone. <laughs> But I listened to, as she left the message, and she said, you know, sir, do you, uh, she was very polite, and she said, sir, uh, d were you aware that you were being used as a lure for scam directed at senior citizens? So I called her right back, and she laid it out for me. And my official photograph from when I was attorney general in 1991 and 1992 was being put on websites, and people were being told that because of my vast experience and connections with government, I was able to secure federal grants for people, and all they had to do was send me some money and I would arrange for these federal grants. And at that time I started noti noticing that I was getting calls at my law firm office, and uh, some of the people I talked to, others left messages, and it was really heart-wrenching. People called, uh, you know, with a desperate hope that this was real. They had already put their money into it. Or others called and they were said they were embarrassed and ashamed that they fell for it. They didn't hold me responsible, but they wanted suggestions of what they should do about it uh, and just wanted me to know about it. I remember one woman had a very nice conversation with her down in a rural part of Georgia, and she and her husband had lost their entire life savings to this scam. So that crystallized the issue for me, and when I got to the department, I wanted to make sure that this was one of our highest priorities to go after this. Now, <laughs> before I arrived, uh, you know, the president had already taken steps to confront this evil. He signed into law in 2017 the Elder Abuse Prevention and Prosecution Act to improve the justice system's response to victims of elder abuse and exploitation. Uh, and then the following year, he signed an executive order that established a task force within the department which placed new emphasis on this problem, the problem especially of cyber fraud and fraud targeting uh, the elderly. Uh, we established 
in our uh, main justice headquarters in Washington a national coordinator for uh, elder justice. Uh, and we have lead prosecutors in every single one of our 94 U.S. attorney distri uh, districts uh, who are also the lead in prosecuting uh, and pursuing elder fraud in those districts. Uh, and we have aggressively been bringing both criminal and civil enforcement actions throughout the country. Now, uh, last year, uh, we had the largest elder fraud sweep uh, ever conducted, and it involved, and I was, and I was proud to announce uh, the results of it uh, in March. It, in, uh, it involved more than 260 defendants who victimized more than 2 million Americans and caused more than $750 million of losses. When I announced these results, I vowed that we were going to escalate our, our actions. And so I'm proud to announce that the department and its law enforcement partners have fulfilled that promise. This year's elder fraud sweep involved over 400 defendants from around the globe, 54% increase over the previous year, and in excess of $1 billion in losses. And I'm proud of the fact that every single one of our 94 U.S. attorney's offices were involved in these cases. And that shows, I think, the breadth and depth of the department's commitment on this issue. And I'll pledge we will continue this fight. So, so as we've been working closely uh, with our law enforcement colleagues, but also from uh, our friends in the private sector, banks, and other companies, it became clear to us that a substantial part of this fraud uh, against elders is conducted by transnational criminal organizations. Uh, and uh, for that reason, we have now expanded our law enforcement efforts to have global reach. Last June, I announced the establishment of the Transnational Elder Strike Force. This is a joint law enforcement effort that brings together the resources and expertise of the department's consumer protection branch, the U.S. attorney's offices in six of our districts, the FBI, and the U.S. Postal uh, Inspection Service, and other organizations. Uh, that strike force has been investigating and prosecuting individuals who are involved with foreign-based fraudulent schemes that target Americans. And impressively, already, just since last June, one quarter of the sweep results that I announced uh, were due to the work of this international strike force. Uh, now, where we can, uh, we like to charge people criminally, but we've also made effective use of our civil enforcement tools. Just last month, for example, the government filed landmark civil actions for temporary restraining orders against five companies and three individuals allegedly responsible for carrying out hundreds of millions of fraudulent robocalls. Those led to massive financial losses across the nation. In a one-week period, they placed over 13 million fraudulent calls in Florida alone. The complaints allege that the defendants ignored numerous warnings that the calls carried over their system facilitated foreign-based fraudulent schemes targeting Americans. The complaints against the alleged defendants alleges that the alleged defendants carried out an astronomical number of robocalls, most of which originated in India. Another line of attack has been for us to go after the money flows as it goes back to the fraudsters. And last year, I announced an effort targeting what we call money mules, the money mule activity. Money mules assist fraudulent schemes by receiving the money from the victim and then taking it and funneling it back uh, to the foreign-based perpetrators. During a two-month initiative, U.S. law enforcement disrupted mule networks that span from Hawaii to Florida and from Alaska to Maine. Actions were taken to take down 600 domestic money mules. The department has now tripled 
the number of criminal prosecutions brought against money mules as compared to the prior year. The department is also fully engaged with other government agencies and with our private partners to expand our outreach uh, to our seniors. Currently, only one in 44 cases is reported. One way to increase this is to increase awareness of the problem. And to that end, we're committed to, by the end of next fiscal year, conducting at least 375 elder fraud-related events for state and local law enforcement and local government, 275 events with senior citizens organizations, and 150 such events with industry groups and their representatives. Unfortunately, the victimization of our elders is not limited to financial predation. We're very concerned about physical abuse and neglect of our seniors. Over the past few years, the department has uncovered horrifying examples of certain nursing facilities where seniors are being mistreated, undernourished, and neglected. These in incidents are extremely unsettling and I will not get too graphic about them. But frankly, when the evidence was reviewed with me, it was nauseating to see it. Suffice it to say that we encountered nursing homes where residents were literally being eaten away by scabies, where patients were left with bed sores down to the bone, where prescribed medication is not being given to the patients who are left screaming in pain for hours on end. And we have found facilities that are just unfit for living, plagued by filth, mold, insects, and rodents. As you know, the President has repeatedly pledged to help and to provide hope to forgotten Americans. And as part of that commitment, I'm now announcing the launch of the department's National Nursing Home Initiative. This will be a comprehensive Department of Justice effort led by our Elder Justice Initiative and in strong partnership with the Department of Health and Human Services. And together, we will use every available tool we have to pursue nursing homes that provide grossly substandard care to their residents. In fact, we have initiated investigations into approximately 30 individuals, individual nursing facilities in nine different states. We already have gotten that far. Mark my words, this initiative will bring justice to those owners and operators who put profits over patients, and it will help to ensure that residents of nursing homes receive the care to which they are entitled. Now, I must point out, and I want to stress, that none of this is an indictment of the assisted living industry as a whole. There are many terrific facilities out there managed by wonderful people and dedicated staff. And to be sure, most of them are doing a fine job delivering the care that their residents need and deserve. But unfortunately, there are some very bad apples out there who are abusing seniors and we are set on figuring out exactly who they were and putting, putting an end to it. The criminals who perpetrate these crimes depend on their victim's silence. Victims routinely report feeling embarrassed and ashamed having fallen for these ploys. However, we must act and speak up. Moreover, we must do a better job uh, of making assistance readily available uh, to seniors who are the potential victims of these scams. And so I'm pleased to announce the launch of the department's national elder fraud hotline. It will provide services to adults age 60 and older who may be the victims of financial fraud. English, Spanish, and other languages will be available. The hotline will be staffed by experienced case managers who can provide personalized support to callers. Case managers will assist callers with reporting suspected fraud to relevant agencies and by providing resources and referrals and information appropriate to the circumstance. When applicable, case managers will complete a complaint form 
with the FBI and submit consumer complaints to the FDC. The number is 1-833-FRAUD-11. That's 1-883-372-8311. Reporting is the first step. It can help authorities identify those who commit fraud, which can then prevent others from being victimized. To be sure, the ongoing campaign against elder fraud and abuse is a collaborative effort, and it will require all of us working together. It will demand a close partnership between the government agencies and the public sector and the private sector. Everyone has to do their part. If you're a local banker who spots something fishy, call. If you're a cashier who sees a senior buying gift cards in bulk, step forward and say something. If you are a local sheriff that notices, notices some abnormal trends, take action. If you work in a nursing facility or an EMS and see something out of the ordinary, report it. We will continue to prosecute an all-out attack on elder fraud and abuse. As long as I am Attorney General, this will be a priority. Seniors are a cherished part of our society, and we must treat them as such. In a special message to Congress in 1963, President John F. Kennedy noted, that longer lifespans offer distinct opportunities for our nation, namely the chance to draw upon the skill and sagacity of our senior citizens and to, in return, provide the respect and recognition they have earned. He continued, it is not enough for a great nation merely to have added new years to life. Our objective must also be to add new life to those years. Thank you to all the U.S. attorneys, our elder justice coordinators, our trial attorneys, and the thousands of state and local law enforcement officers across the country who have fought hard to continue this effort. And they should take great pride in the results we've already achieved. Again, thank you for your time this morning, for all you do in the pursuit of justice. It means a lot to millions of people. Thank you.